With Thanksgiving over, we are officially in Christmas movie season. I typed in full movie Christmas into YouTube, and this is what we got. Wait, do people normally wrap up salami? Here, Mrs. Fiorella. Merry Christmas. What is this? What you ordered? Two pounds of salami. Apparently, no. No, they do not. And everyone is already mad at Christina Milan 50 seconds into this movie. As usual in this movie, Christina Milan plays a character who is multiracial. Her dad is a somehow Cuban Ron Canada, and her mom's ethnicity is uh, loud. I'll show you how we used to do it back in Cuba. What are you talking about? You left Cuba when you were 10. And go find your father. I'm sure he'll find us. Donnie! What? Salad! Sometimes I think I was born into the wrong family. Prediction she finds a magical snow globe that sends her into a magical world where everything is perfect, but she learns to love her true family along the way. Let's find out if I'm right. That did not take long at all. Oh, Christmas tree, oh. Uh, hi. You'll have to forgive them, dear. We hardly ever get strangers here. And by strangers, she means brown people. Sure, there's a magical oven that can create food in seconds, but more magically and shockingly, it's a bunch of Christmas-obsessed people that have never heard of Jesus. So, Mary rode on the donkey, and Joseph walked alongside. And when they got to Bethlehem, they were very, very tired. But there was no room for them at the inn. That must have been discouraging. They should have come here, Angela. We certainly would have put them up for a night or two. What happened then? Uh, it all worked out. <laughs> <laughs> After magical white people dinner, she runs off to thank Douglas but he's nowhere to be found. She wakes up back in her bed thinking this was all just a great dream. After an argument with her family, she goes to sleep hoping to escape back into perfect Christmas world, which she does. Her and Douglas go ice skating and buy each other presents at a magical gift shop. Douglas, thank you, but um, I didn't get you anything. Well, the store's still open. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Thanks! But when she wakes up wearing the gloves, she realizes this isn't a dream, and she can go into Magical Snow Globe Land anytime she wants. Cue the montage. Oh my gosh! <sighs> Last night I took a walk in the snow. Couples holding hands, places to go. Somebody, everyone but me is in love. Santa, can you hear me? I know exactly what I want this year. Santa, can you hear me? I'll be waiting here. Santa, that's my only wish this Forty-five minutes into this movie, she has abandoned her family, pretty much. She starts showing up 
late to work at the family deli, missed her sister's baby shower completely, and to spend so much time inside the snow globe land that her and Douglas are officially boyfriend and girlfriend. It is important to note that she lives in an apartment building managed by her parents, who for years have only rented the apartment next to her out to cute single guys. This hasn't worked though, so they're taking her apartment to give to her pregnant sister and forcing her to move downstairs into the smaller apartment. She's done with all this, and while having a conversation with Douglas, says, I'm be right back, I'm just going to tell my family I'm not coming to dinner. When she leaves Snow Globe Land, cute single guy and her family are already having dinner in her apartment. Over the course of the next hour, she starts to fall for the guy, and just as they're about to hold hands, Douglas walks out of her bedroom. <laughs> Angela? Merry Christmas. Douglas? I thought you checked the bedroom. Who's Douglas? Hi, I'm Angela's boyfriend. They go out into the streets of Brooklyn, and he's basically a puppy. A tall, handsome puppy. A tall, handsome puppy that she wants to bone. Douglas? They don't fuck that night, though, either because snow globe people don't have genitals or because he falls into a unwakeable magic snow globe sleep. I'll let you decide which one is true. We skip until the morning, and she has to go to work. Afraid he's gonna burn the apartment down, she asks cute neighbor guy to babysit Douglas for the day. She gets drunk, is about to kiss cute neighbor guy, when who should walk out of her bedroom to the sound of a snow globe, but Douglas's snow globe girlfriend, Marie. Yeah, he had a girlfriend this whole time. Hello. <laughs> How am I supposed to compete with this? With my clock radio? <laughs> it's a radio too. So, what about my prediction? She finds a magical snow globe that sends her into a magical world where everything is perfect, but she learns to love her true family along the way. I mean, look around. It's everything I dreamed Christmas could be. What? But it's too much. Perfection's overrated. I mean, I may just have just one Christmas, and yeah, my family's going to screw it up. They always do. But it's mine. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Overall, it's a cute little movie. The acting's not great. You really only have two sets. But who cares? There's some funny bits. You'll, good lesson of loving your family. You might argue sometimes, but you gotta get along. Well, maybe not in 2019. But in 2007, you did. Christina Milan ends up with a cute neighbor guy. Douglas ends up with his girlfriend. They hide off in the bakery while no one else is there to do whatever snow globe people with no genitals do. Christina Milan gives the girlfriend her clock radio. Everyone's happy. They have a nice dinner. She moves out of her parents' apartment into an apartment across the street and is living happily near her family but no longer with her family. Thank you for watching, and as always, she'll try to do better next time. Can't promise Christina Milan in a sexy nightgown, but I will try my best.
What is that? That's a fire hydrant. Wow. What's that? That's a mailbox. Ah! And that would be a car. 